In this unit, we will explore the relationship among the three averages we discussed last time. Remembering that the mode is the most frequent value in the sample or population, the median is the value that divides the sample or population into two equally large groups, and the mean is the sum of all the values spread out among each observation equally. We get the mean by dividing the sum of the sample size or population depending upon our data set. By looking at the relationship among these three averages, we can learn more about our data. The key to this relationship is the skewness of the data. By skewness, we mean how the data looks in terms of where the most observations congregate. Are the data concentrated at one end or the other? If so, then we would call it skewed. The graphs of frequency distributions of the data are very helpful in visualizing the effect of skewness on this relationship. Because we can visually locate the relevant measures of location, the mode, the median, and the mean. This can be done with bar charts, histograms, or line graphs, polygons. Pie charts can be used also by graphing the percentages of each class, but these are not really frequency distributions and can sometimes hide more than they reveal. I've never had much fondness for pie charts, actually. True frequency distributions provide much useful information. The frequency distributions here show just how quickly one can see the data and can begin to make some crude inferences with this simple technique. In figure A, the distribution is skewed to the right, called leptokurtic. Compare this to figure B, which is skewed left, and called platykurtic. Think platypus. We could infer that the values of x are bunched at the smaller values in figure A and bunched at the larger values in figure B. Often, income distributions of countries are compared using these measures of skewness. Developing countries, most often, have dramatically skewed distributions looking like figure A. Figure B might be a distribution of grades in a statistics class of particularly good students or the distribution of golf scores, where the frequency of good scores, that is low scores, is skewed left, and the bulk of the distribution contains the scores of the ordinary players with high scores. Notice that for a skewed right distribution, the mean, x bar, is higher than the median, which is higher than the mode. For a skewed left distribution, like figure B, the order is reversed. Both figure C and D are examples of symmetrical distributions, they have very different spreadness in the data, which we will call variance, and take up in the next unit. For a symmetrical distribution, the mean, median, and mode are the same value. One half of the values are on each side of the mean. Remembering the relationship between the area of a frequency distribution and probability, we can conclude that the probability is one half, or 0.5, that a random draw will result in a value greater than the mean or less than the mean. We can go even further with a frequency distribution if it is symmetric. Imagine we move one unit from the mean in both directions. If we now shade in the frequency distribution at the tails, we can say that the probability of randomly drawing a value in the upper tail is exactly the same as drawing an observation in the lower tail. This fact will be of great help in the future and again shows the value of frequency distributions.